Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and at the end of my series on reception class maths teaching I put out a plea for anyone who had anything to say, anything to add, anything they think they could be better or just some practical experience that they wanted to share to come and make a video with me and that's why today I'm here with the fabulous Charlotte Davis who is an expert on, and you'd better say it because I get it wrong, motor sensory integration that's bringing together all the senses and all the motor skills which happens between zero years and seven or eight years of age ideally so that's motor sensory, sensory integration. integration now i've heard about this from some of the schools that i've been working with and they have sung its praises it's been transformational especially in schools that are facing many many challenges with many of their students who have appear to have learning difficulties or attention deficit difficulties and so on so, Ab yeah take Absolutely. it away explain. so what you're trying to do is you're trying to get together all the motor skills so how your big muscles work how your posture works with your whole frame because until that's in place you can't do fine motor skills with your face your feet your hands so much you want to get that all integrated with your vision so you know exactly where your hand eye is going you also your sound processing because sound is linked to posture it's linked to your ability to make sense of sounds so when you come to read your vision and your sound have to work together perfectly otherwise your eyes jump everywhere you really have to understand motor sensory integration if you want to be an efficient learner and so getting children to the highest level of development is really important if we want to give all our youngsters equal opportunities in life, if we want them to be efficient and happy learners. So this links into one thing that I was emphasising is that we've pushed our curriculum down so we're teaching four-year-olds what seven-year-olds are taught in other countries and that creates all sorts of problems because children are simply not wired up to learn. They're not wired up to learn, but also you're damaging them. So for instance, children only learn the full range of the sounds you need for the English language, really going up to seven years. And that's very well researched by Dodds, etc. And so they're having to use all sorts of other senses to try and make sense of all those phonics you're busy flashing at them, but they're actually learning bad and inefficient ways of learning. So when we get these very distressed eight, seven, eight, nine year olds, we're having to go back to three and retrain them and teach them how to learn efficiently. And what would by rushing to skills you're not ready for, you are teaching children coping strategies. So for instance, the tables, you can't see pattern until you have stereopsis of vision. Your two eyes must work together the central 5% of each eye must overlap perfectly to send equal messages from each eye to the brain. When the brain is able to do that, which is seven or eight years of age, then the brain can start learning to see and manipulate pattern. Times tables are very complex patterns lying in the 100 square pattern. You need to be able to see the 100 square pattern manipulate it and then do complicated manipulations until you can really see pattern. So there's a heck of a lot of development goes on before we get to seven, eight, when you're beginning to see pattern properly and then manipulate it. So because we don't have a proper rigorous understanding of human development, we are actually essentially educationally putting children in carpet factories. We're making them work with a visual system they're not ready to learn. So they work with one eye, then with the other eye because they can't develop their motor skills because they're sitting too long we haven't got a proper PE curriculum they don't know how to work their body so they work off to one side or they work off to the other side but they're not working coherently with left and right sides of the body so as you may have picked up Charlotte is the top lady she is the international guru she works around the world lecturing on this topic and we're really lucky to have her here today you and she um, I, in, I picked up various things because we are stuck where we are in no. the UK at the minute we are teaching four, four year olds we can't change that policy wise at the minute we'd love to but we can't so we have to try and work around it as best as we can and I identified um, in my course children who are four have very poor short-term memory long-term memory and they have 
often don't have the very basic steps of maths in place, like an understanding of not what number is. And I talked about that and how we worked around it. But you've really identified something else, which is that, tell me again. The spatial awareness? Or no, the motor. The, the motor sensory integration. The motor sensory integration. Um, and there's more to that than I've covered. Ooh, so that's what we're really yes. focusing on today. So given that we have to t start teaching children maths when they're four, mm -hmm. What do we need to do to make sure that they flourish and thrive? Number one, that what we need for this country is a PE curriculum. We need a PE curriculum that spends the whole of reception year making sure that every child has got what's called their primitive reflexes suppressed, that they actually know where their arms and legs are. So primitive reflexes, I can hear you thinking, <clears throat> when you're born, your only sense that's really wired to your brain is your sound. And as you move your head, you start making involuntary movements of your arms and legs. And as you develop and you roll onto your tummy and you get to crawling, you start making far more conscious movements of your arms and your legs and your head. And it's really important that every child goes through that. Unfortunately, if you're born premature, you're going to have some problems with your primitive reflexes because you haven't gone through an the full birth process. If you are born C-section, there's a very big chance you will have problems. If you are a bottom shuffler and don't crawl, you'll have problems. So as you can see, basically everybody has some problem with primitive reflexes. You don't get a conscious control of your muscle development. So checking very, very thoroughly that every single conscious control of your muscle, your big muscle, gross muscle, muscle development is in place, and it is not, making sure it is in place really thoroughly is the work of the time we should be spending in reception here. So at reception level, are we talking about snow angels? Yes, we are talking, well, snow angels is the very first thing. Okay. When a baby is born, if you touch the base of its spine, it will have an involuntary reaction with that it will urinate or defecate. If it's got full bowel, bowels or bladder, it will want to go to the toilet and it will just do it automatically, which is great because if it didn't, it would blow up. But you want to get rid of that reflex. But if a child hasn't done enough movement, they don't lose that reflex. They arrive at school at four, they put the base of their spine on the back of a chair and they're all wriggly, terribly wriggly. And we label them ADHD. They're not ADHD, they're highly likely to have what's called a retained spinal gland reflex, which means every time anything touches the, spine, the base of the spine, they can't stop wriggling. So you want to get them doing snow angels very, very slowly to, rep to suppress that reflex. Going through that isn't just good for the child in terms of suppressing that reflex. It is also good for getting them to the point where they really know where their arms and legs are in space. They can do with their eyes closed a movement with both top and bottom halves of their body moving in sequence. They can move without having strange involuntary movements. Okay, let's see a video of that. So here we have somebody lying down, Amy, and I'm showing you the arms are by the side, the feet are together, the eyes are closed. Yeah? And you want your child lying there and to be able to take their arms and legs out slowly and come back in again. And you don't want them taking them out where they're not working together smoothly. And you don't want them taking them out such that they don't know where their arm is in space. So a child who has to look and check where their arm is doesn't know where their arm is in space. Likewise with their legs and so on. You, they really have to know. They really have to be able to take their arms out smoothly if you ask them just to do arms and legs if you ask them just to do legs. To be able to take out on one side and on the other side. To be able to take out across the midline. And I would expect if you did this with your children, you'd get a 90% failure rate. Yeah. So they've really got to know in space 
wear their arms and legs and be able to do it with their eyes closed. Really, really, where are those limbs? Because if they don't know where their body is, they don't know the basic foundations to start doing maths. The problems that exist, as you can see, are I want to take the arms and legs out smoothly, I want to go across the midline, but what can happen is that you get an involuntary reaction. And that's telling you the person hasn't got what's called midline crossing. They can't work across the left and right sides. Or if the child, you've asked them to move an arm and leg and they go into space, they really, really have problems and they have no idea where their arms and legs are. And that is quite common. So how do we work to ensure that every child learns to do this in reception class? Do we need this exercise in every PE lesson? Just no, working we right need it every single day. We need to take on board the parents because they've got to do it on Saturday and Sunday. Grandparents often are a good source as well to get involved. Every single member of staff in the school is going to have to pitch in because everybody needs to make sure that every child is doing this every day for at least half a term. Where do they find the space? You're going to have to find it and do it in shift. You're going to have to do it because to begin with, I would imagine your whole school have a problem because our screening of children in Croydon is we're looking at 90% of children having problems with retained primitive reflexes. Okay, so if we were starting to educate children who were seven, far lot less would have problems because they've grown up a lot more, done a lot more physical activity by the time they've become seven. Ideally, or... but because of new technology, because of um, things like high chairs, and bouncer chairs, children being in push chairs, children's being pushed along and kept passive for very long periods with mobile phones, the situation is getting worse, not better. Okay. Therefore, it is best to assume that most children really don't have very good control because certainly even in secondary schools, I can see 70% failure rate. If you're not in that top group, I generally expect there to be problems. And even in the top group, I meet people who you would describe as very able and they might be described as Asperger's or whatever, but actually what they've got is retained primitive reflexes, possibly also sound processing problems. So there are going to be other exercises that children are going to need to do to attain their skills by the time they're yes. seven. This is Charlotte's book, what well, have got Maze of Learning. Developing motor skills. And it explains these exercises really, really clearly, lovely pictures here. Mm. but. You're saying Snow Angel is at the heart of reception class. If they one takeaway, it's this. One takeaway is do Snow Angels. Yeah. Because that will ground the child. It means that you know all of that class is now, to be honest, dry. They should not be having problems with their bladder control and being really distracted by the spinal gland. You know some of the plus things are you'll actually have equal development of the back muscles so that minimises scoliosis. There's huge health benefits to getting the primitive reflexes in place so the whole frame can work properly. And what's the link to the learning of maths? The link to learning of maths is you know where you are in space. If you don't know where your arms and legs are, you cannot do spatial maths. If you cannot understand left and right, so another exercise you need to do is a thing called the Morrow reflex, you cannot do anything which involves directionality. What's the moral reflex? Can we... You... Oh, the moral <laughs> reflex. I will get Is you this a... this one where you're... It's where you are put... you, you're putting your left hand and right ankle over each other. Hang on. So, hang on. Yeah. Left hand. Yeah, well, let's have left on top or right on top. Your... Yeah, well, I'm just thinking. Does... Well, no, do it at ankle. It's better at ankle. So I'm crossing my ankles. You're crossing your ankles. But have I got to have the opposite same, ankle? No, it's got to be the, same, be the same. Side, same side. Same ankle, side. Okay. Same side. Well, we arm. can't say left and right because it's the opposite on the video. And but it also is the be opposite. Honest, your child can't do left and right until they've sorted this. So right. often when I'm working with children, I'm putting a sock on one side and a, we keep the sock on one foot so they can really feel the difference between left and right. Okay. They're going to tuck their head down and they're going to go right out and put their heads back so the head has to really go a long way back and then they're going to come back in but this time the opposite side is on top oh my goodness i can just imagine trying to get a whole reception class to do this 
I've got schools where <laughs> they are all doing it and they are literally and having got the children calmed down to begin with getting them grounded in their bodies and getting them to go through slowly but also saying to all the parents look let's do it and one of the parents at one of the schools I worked at they were just so amazed that their child had made two years progress over the summer holidays because they kept going with the exercises so you know we don't stop you photocopying our book we give the exercises we'll give you any number of videos online you can copy we want the nation's children to be fit to learn and the whole point is we know that if you really don't know where your body is in space you can't control it completely you will not develop properly to have a good sense of understanding of the space around you your the other horrible thing that happens is your eyes can't cross your midline properly so when you're reading your eyes jump at the midline so these are really important it affects your whole physical development so having a really good PE program can have a massive positive benefits for and the what nation. What about squashed frog? Squashed, squashed frog, frog is the other one you mentioned. Yeah, well, we stole this from the Romanians because they had had so many orphans to work on and sort out the mess. What squash frog is doing is you're simply asking a child to lie, but they're lying in a very specific way. They're going to be symmetrical. They've got to feel that symmetry. They've got to turn their feet out and they're trying to press that their heels down what you're trying to do is get their legs to turn properly into the right position with their hips that enables their feet and ankles to work properly when your feet and ankles work properly you have a much better sense of proprioception and proprioception is that sense of where you are in space it works with all your senses and motor skills it also means your legs are in the right place with your hips and your spine is in the right place and your shoulders start going back. So your posture and your whole skeleton starts working better. We train the children to also breathe rhythmically because when you breathe rhythmically, three or four breaths out and three and four breaths in, whatever they can manage, and you think about just staying calm you think where you are in your body that brings you to a very very calm state but also we know that the research on how humans hold trauma is they tense up their long polyvagal nerve if you're stretching it out line like that you bring someone to calm so just teaching everybody to go into this position enables them to get a sense of where they are in their body it enables them to get their body structure and frame and posture much better it enables them to if they're in a hyper alert state drop into a posture that's calm and when everybody stretches their long polyvagal it's perfectly normal to lie there breathing rhythmically being calm thinking where you are in your body that is a lifesaver for life i use it with professionals when i'm working with professional lawyers and accountants and people who are getting into hyper alert states it enables them to sleep better if they're doing it 10 minutes before sleep. It's just all round good, free health and sets you up for life. So the exercises we've discussed today are the bulk of chapters one and two of this book. Yes. If There's you... a bit more in here and I highly recommend it. How can they order this? They is can the... order it through our website, which is www.fitfit hyphen to hyphen learn l-e-a-r-n dot com www.fit to learn hyphenated dot com yes and the two is a number two. Oh, it's a number two okay just to make it complicated i'll try and put that on as a as a yeah. title on the screen and teachers particularly if they ask me for more information i tend to send them lots of it and we can come into schools and do talks train staff and that's all available through your website. That's how to contact you. Yes, you just contact us. And to be honest, schools negotiate with us usually what it is they want as a package. Because yeah. our experience is there's no point me going in and teaching the TAs. It doesn't work. We've got to change the whole school. I've got to be able to talk to the parents. We've got to get everybody on board. But what you find is that it becomes a really serious community thing. Because once the parents understand, then you get these parents going, but I'm a nurse and I didn't know this. Actually, this applies to all my patients. They, they get And when it. we look at the people who face most challenges in life, if we look at prison populations, absolutely. those with substantial learning disease, disorders, 
so we know how they know how to get in touch with you i think what you do is awesome and i've heard incredible feedback from schools in terms of the learning progress that children are making because they've had this kind of program in place because they've thought through these things so you're tomatoes trained but tomatoes sound therapy trained but again like all these things we really want schools to understand what we do and then train up because there is a limit to me and actually the more of us train and think critically the more the bigger the community and understanding gets so your passion isn't about building a huge empire for you it's about getting this out there so that other people can take it on board reinterpret it from themselves in their their context for the future just keep developing the knowledge that you've got yes because it's hard it's hard it's hard stuff to understand there are simple messages that fly through twitter and this isn't one of them no but it matters it matters enormously and once you've empowered people then you know you teach a teaching assistant how to sort out motor skills trust me they're going to teach the estate and that is what's so empowering and they get it okay i think we're done for now thank you thank you so much for watching thank you for coming it's been like i've had thousands of pounds worth of training all one-to-one because you came here now same goes out to other people who've got something to share if you've got great practice going on that you would love other people to have access to know about please get in touch because that's what i'm here for i want to help you share it bye for now bye